Uh, okay, welcome to the Ambag Einstein lecture series on inelastic neutron scattering. Today we are pleased to invite the Dr. De Hong Yu and the Dr. Shinichino Yano from the ACNS to talk about the time of flight neutron spectrometer and the triple X neutron spectrometer respectively. So today's lecture will be generally divided into two parts. And I will give the brief introduction to the speaker at the beginning of the each part, and we will have the Q and A sessions at the end of each sessions. Okay, so let's start with the time of flight neutron spectrometer, and let me introduce Dr. De Hong Yu. So Dr. De Hong Yu got his bachelor and master degrees of the physics in China. He received his PhD in physics from the University of Western Australia in. 19, uh, 1997. Following the ARC Research Fellow, he was awarded Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship in 2001 and worked at the University of Master Germany for almost two years. He also worked at Tokyo University, Japan as a JSPS Fellow in 2004. He was awarded the Fellowship of uh, Australia Institute of Physics in 2022. At Anston, uh, he led and developed the, a new neutron spectrometer, Pelican. He is one of the instrument scientists for this instrument. He has been working in several international owned scientific institutions, such as the uh, last Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory and Oak Ridge National Labor Laboratory in USA. His current uh, research in interest is in studying structure and dynamics of functional materials with elastic neutron scattering. Okay, I will pass to the home. So the home, you can start the. Okay, let me I, <clears throat> share my screen first. Okay, first of all, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, thank and the organizer from Einbach and uh, QLE and uh, for this uh, uh, nice uh, actually session for us to promote uh, inless neutron scattering <coughs> in general. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. I'll become very slow. Uh, okay, um, today um, following the last uh, lecture by Kyu Li, who has given an uh, excellent uh, introduction about overall uh, concept and uh, uh, principle for inless neutron scheduling, cover both time of flight and uh, triple axis at instrument. So today I will focus on time of flight uh, at the instrument. Uh, but um, as uh, here, we only have uh, one time of flight instrument, uh, Pelican. So I uh, will based on this instrument and uh, to talk about uh, what we can do. So basically we'll introduce Pelican first and uh, how we can how we can do experiment on Pelican and uh, they show the capabilities by several uh, scientific highlights. And uh, Pelican has been very popular recently. We got uh, uh, three times over subs subscription. We have done quite a lot over a wide, uh, uh, very broad uh, range of size. So I can only select uh, a few today to show you what we can do. And uh, <clears throat> so after the int introduction, we'll first talk about uh, 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 borocaloric materials and then followed by non dubai vibrations in the uh, uh, liquid at the confined solid and uh, in the end meshing uh, two examples uh, for quantum magnet. <clears throat> uh, first, this is the uh, Pelican, the instrument, and uh, this is the journal, uh, uh, general specification. We Pelican is the code neutron uh, new, uh, spectrometer and the energy range is very low, so from 14 mEV to 2 mEV. And uh, we have a re reasonable good resolution from 60 micro UV to 350 micro UV and cover uh, a reasonable uh, Q range uh, from 0.2 inverse instrument to 4.5, depend, depend on the instant energy we uh, uh, used. <clears throat> so the Pelican instrument uh, is uh, um, <clears throat> uh, 
just using yin, yin elastic and quasi elastic neutron scattering to do low energy dynamics of various of materials, uh, actually variety of uh, 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 phenomena like uh, in physics, crystal field excitation, photon density of state, and for you know uh, many different kind of uh, uh, materials, high TC superconductors and uh, thermoelectrical, piezoelectrical materials, etc. And uh, to chemistry, uh, a kind of molecular dynamics and the diffusions, uh, for example, in molecular magnets, uh, hydrogen bonding system, storage system. And uh, also we can study through uh, Queen's uh, quasi elastic neutron scattering, the dynamics of protein structure uh, in biological uh, systems. So the sample we can study is, uh, uh, can be a solid form, liquid, uh, can be a glass or single crystal, etc. So we can do basically everything. <clears throat> um, so I will just quickly uh, remind us all about the neutron scattering because these, I, I found this audio we have a, a very diverse, uh, diverse uh, uh, spectra from uh, you know uh, uh, professor level to uh, 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 graduate students level. So I just uh, quickly remind us about the neutron scattering is. Uh, Neutron scattering, just like electron scattering, uh, photon, uh, actually photon uh, scattering, and uh, we shoot uh, a beam of neutrons at a sample, and then the neutrons uh, after interaction with the sample can be scattered off to different direction and with different energy. And we uh, we actually measure, where's my mouse? Yeah, I just try to maybe use the least point. Uh, we measure uh, called the double differential cross section, which is basically the probability for the neutron scat into different direction with different energy. And then this double differential cross section proportional to a scattering function we call SQ omega. This SQ omega is contain all the information uh, uh, about the samples. That's the quantity we want to study, we want to measure. Of course, as all other collision experiment, uh, the, the process has to obey a fundamental law of conservation, momentum and energy conservation. <clears throat> so this is a typical uh, spectra for yin less neutron scattering, as you probably have seen in many uh, cases. And uh, this is the, in the right in the, in the, in the, uh, at the center, uh, we see an uh, 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 elastic peak. And that's the corresponding to the neutrons without losing air or gain without changing energy uh, after through the, um, the, the, the sample. This is uh, carry the information about the structure of the sample. And then on top of that, we have uh, actually broadening effects. And this is called the quasi elastic neutron scattering. This corresponding to the diffusion property, rotational property, and uh, any other uh, uh, broad wide distribution of the in energy in time, uh, uh, all the, these processes. And uh, uh, when we go to uh, even high energy and then we see some defined uh, uh, peak, this is corresponding to yin less neutron scattering and from, uh, for example, phonons, um, magnons and uh, tunneling effects, etc. <clears throat> so this is the uh, pelican. I will show you how we do experiment. And it is the real picture of uh, actually uh, pelican for those you haven't uh, uh, used before. So um, we <clears throat> this is the wide beam, wide neutron beam uh, having wide energy range from the cold neutron source in the reactor, and then um, <clears throat> and through a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, well designed monochromator, we select a, a, a defined energy. Uh, and then this uh, uh, defined energy of the beam and goes through choppers, uh, change it to a uh, past beam from the continuous beam. And uh, so that we can use time of flight technique to figure out the energy of the scattered neutrons. And uh, we started the clock uh, from this chopper. And uh, when, when the neutron reach the uh, detector, we stop the clock uh, by counting this uh, time uh, difference, or we call the time of flight, we can get the different energy 
of the scattered neutrons, uh, 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 and as you can see here. So from the, the detector, and uh, we can see this. One on top of this, we see basically the SQ. This is a, like, a, a, like a diffraction pattern. For example, this is a single crystal. And you can see all these uh, different break refraction when we rotate the sample and uh, it, when uh, at a certain detector, so we, we, we see these uh, this break peaks. And uh, this uh, long line, that's the powder line. We also call that this is from the polycrystal or a powder sample. We will see this kind of uh, uh, break refraction uh, form a line. And this is actually from the mounting of the single crystal. And uh, you can see it's one one two one 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 zero 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 one zero zero half. And the zero zero half we see very weak. Actually, this is a magnetical peak. It's uh, kind of diffused. Uh, I, I'm scattering at this temperature. And um, this is give our SQ basically the diffraction pattern. And then we also have the extra information and uh, about uh, the energy. This is the time of flight spectra. And you can see this, this peak, that's the elastic peak. This is corresponding to those neutrons without changing energy after scatter of the sample. And, and you see here, this is the phonon density state of the, of the samples. These neutrons actually gain energy from the sample, so they arrive faster. Uh, they arrive at the detector much faster that the elastic at neutrons, okay? We combine this SQ and S omega, and we give a SQ omega, the scattering function. As you can show here, this is a single crystal. We get a basically four dimensional uh, 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 data set, a uh, two crystallography direction and energy and the color code corresponding to the intensity. As you can see, we see uh, the, the spin wave, and the elastic lines, and we can, after we get this uh, 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 package, we can cut, we can uh, wear what we, we, we like. And uh, you, you, for the triple axis uh, it, it instrument to get this, we have to scan point by point to get this uh, kind of information. And uh, so that's the, the uh, actually the different. <clears throat> So in the next slide, I'll just show you quickly as a, a, a little bit far and uh, to show the difference between time of flight instrument and the triple axis. As, the, as you can see for time of flight, we get a whole things. Just like when we eat a chicken, we either we have a whole chicken and get a, a, a knife and a fork and we eat uh, actually whatever we like. And, uh, and uh, so, and then for, Triple X type of the instrument, just like we just, okay, we, we just want to eat a, a drumstick and uh, we can eat something uh, else later on uh, in the actually next time. So they have a different uh, uh, approach and uh, have a, both has an advantage and a disadvantage. <clears throat> I think uh, uh, QLE has uh, 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 talked already and actually Yanu may uh, uh, talk again. <clears throat> So now I go to I use uh, I think the best way to to demonstrate what we can do and by showing some examples. And the first one I will uh, talk about the barocaloric materials and uh, how we can use the elastic neutron scattering and of course elastic neutron scattering to provide the uh, fundamental understanding. And uh, as you all know, the current uh, vapor pressure cycle technology uh, for cooling. Uh, or heating uh, has a uh, very um, uh, big uh, drawbacks. So for example, the uh, contribute heavily to the greenhouse gas emission. About 80% uh, uh, contribution from uh, our current uh, cooling technology. And uh, you also have a huge amount of electric, el el electricity consumption, about 25%. And uh, so people has been actively uh, 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 studied uh, to find uh, alternatives to minimize all these effects. And uh, so one of the approach to use solid state uh, uh, caloric effects and uh, to uh, uh, provide cooling or heating 
um, so this can depend uh, on the on, on the external field we use can be can we can have a magneto caloric effect and ele electrochloric effect and elastic caloric effect. And we when we apply for hydrostatic pressure to the sample cause the phase transition and the effects we call the barocaloric effects. So today I'm just talking about this one. <clears throat> so the collaborator uh, uh, of Professor Bing Lee's group has discovered uh, a group of materials called the plastic crystals have huge uh, barocaloric effects. And you can see here the entropy change upon phase transition is uh, almost uh, more than uh, uh, 10 times as compared to all other uh, uh, actual materials, uh, caloric materials. And uh, we all know, so actually fundamentally, and uh, uh, good caloric materials need to have a, a large delta T change and uh, which uh, at a small um, external force. And the delta T uh, uh, change is proportional to the entropy change. The entropy is proportional to dP over dT and uh, the volume change upon phase transition. This dP over dT is the Grandison parameter of the materials and uh, so represent the high unharmonic lattice dynamics. So this kind of effects we can directly probe with inless neutron scattering. So this is uh, as a, a, a typical um, as a, a example for the plastic crystals we choose MPG. And you can see this is the phonon density state measured on Pelican and the amateurs from Jet Park. And uh, especially we, 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 uh, we identified a peak around the 12 MeV has strong temperature dependence. And uh, so if for a, a, a solid have, uh, can be a, a described by the harmonic uh, 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 and oscillation, and they should have no effect in the phonon density state, no temperature effect. So this is strong temperature effects and uh, uh, give us direct evidence of the strong unharmonic lattice dynamics of these materials. And this is the queens and uh, from Pelican show the, the order to disorder uh, transition uh, uh, upon phase transition. So from uh, combine all other uh, uh, studies and uh, the inless neutron scattering, we, uh, and uh, we, with the inless neutron scattering, we, we basically, we understand the, the fundamental mechanism for this huge uh, barocaloric effects in this group of plastic uh, uh, crystals. And so this is, this is first the, the, the due to the intrinsically, this uh, huge entropy change upon uh, phase transition. And also it's good to this uh, highly uh, uh, flexible structure and uh, give the uh, giant uh, 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 compressibility. Basically it's a tiny pressure can lead a huge volume change. And uh, at the fundamental level, this is all due to the large in, uh, entropy change is due to the high unharmonic lattice dynamics. <clears throat> so this study has opened a new field and, uh, and uh, so new systems and with record breaking performance emerge every day now. And uh, actually a real machine based on this uh, group of materials and uh, this barocaloric caloric effects will become soon, um, <clears throat> will become available soon. Okay, the next, uh, ne the next some example I will show you, this is actually inverse barocaloric effects from this sample NH4SCM. And so this sample has the uh, transition temperature uh, around 335K at cooling and 365K at heating. And the, 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 the interesting thing uh, from this sample is that it can uh, simultaneously achieve a large entropy change and a large refrigeration cooling power. And uh, for ordinary actual material, this is not possible to achieve both uh, 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 simultaneously because they are just uh, 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 contradict to each other. But due to the large volume change, and actually this material have a large uh, uh, effect uh, uh, um, of both in that S and RCP. And uh, also more interesting, this material, the transition temperature change uh, decrease when we apply for actually pressure. So this is what we call the actually inverse barocaloric effects. And with this effect, we can propose to make a machine to make a 
called uh, uh, thermal battery and uh, just store heat, just uh, store heat and just like we store electricity with uh, our conventional battery. And uh, this is the, um, the, the we, pro we try to get some uh, fundamental understanding from the structure point of view. We see new, use neutron diffraction. We show the uh, phase transition from monoclinic to orthorhombic. And uh, from quasi less neutron scattering, uh, we demonstrate the transition from tetrahedral tumbling uh, to cubic tumbling and uh, upon phase transition with uh, significant different time scale. And the phono density state and should uh, 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 clearly the transition from ordered to a disordered state. And it's more interesting when we apply for high pressure, and we definitely see the actually high pressure induce the disorder. It's not other way around. And you can see the high pressure change the uh, the the structure from a relatively ordered state to a relatively uh, disordered state. And this is clearly shown in the queens. And then you can see um, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, green uh, area that's corresponding to the course, the queen signal uh, at a low pressure. And then when we apply for a high pressure 300 megapascal, and you see this the blue area, that's the queen signal uh, become much broader and the indicator much more at disorder generated in the sample. And this also shows in the phonon density state as a function for the pressure. <clears throat> and uh, so based on this inverse uh, uh, barochloric effects, uh, we, they, they, we can actually make a, a thermal battery. So, uh, the principles are like this, we can charge the battery at a high temperature environment and with high pressure, and then the heat will store in the sample under the high pressure uh, condition. And then we can transport this uh, cell to a different location at a different time, and then we can uh, uh, release the pressure, and then the heat will release to, uh, and uh, we we are uh, released for us to uh, to be uh, to make for use it. <clears throat> okay, the next topic I like to to talk about the vibrational properties beyond the bar model. As you all know, in the solid state physics, and uh, the the, um, the Phonon density state for solid at low energy uh, uh, behave at omega square, uh, uh, and uh, this is of uh, one of the fundamental for the fundamental laws in solid state physics, uh, uh, being the, being established by Dubai over 100 years ago. <clears throat> However, recently we discovered it's not always uh, 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 actually valid this this uh, this uh, fundamental law. For example, for liquid, they rather uh, behave like a linear relationship, and for a solid, confined to a two-dimensional geometry, it behave like omega to power three. So, for liquid, due to this uh, uh, very complex dynamics, and it has been very difficult to derive an analytical formula to de to describe the phonon density state. Until recently, uh, there's a, a theory uh, 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 came out. And uh, give the uh, define the phonon density state uh, for liquid, and uh, this formula uh, when we reach uh, at the low energy limit, we come up with the linear relationship. Until then, no experimental verification. So we uh, uh, perform some experimental uh, uh, investigation to prove this theory. As you can see here, this is for water, uh, and we clearly observe the phase transition from. Uh, uh, e to power square and uh, to linear relationship uh, upon the phase transition from ice to water, you know, from the solid to liquid. And uh, this is also true for other liquids like a polymer liquid, uh, uh, liquid metal, etc. Et so uh, this is, has been combined with the theory we, we, we prove this universal law of uh, uh, vibrational density state for uh, actually for liquids. They behave like a linear relationship at the low end region. So this universal law will act as a fundamental law for liquid state physics and just as the Debar law for solid state uh, physics. So this will act as a benchmark for many research areas like glass formation, phase transition, and liquid gas transportation, etc. This work has been published very quickly in the Journal of Physics Chemistry Letters 
with edited chores and uh, uh, made into front cover. <clears throat> so the next example, I'll show you the uh, omega to power three law. And when we confine the water into uh, uh, a graphene oxide membranes, and uh, we, we, we see this transition uh, uh, to the omega to power three law. For example, here, this is the uh, bulk water at 120 uh, Kelvin. And uh, um, uh, beware of this, uh, the y axis is normalized to omega to power two. So this is a flat line means this is omega square law. And uh, you can see uh, when we change the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, um, the level of uh, hydration, and uh, we see this uh, change to a linear relationship, and actually it's uh, omega to power three. And the same information we plot into a log log uh, scale, and we see clearly from omega, omega square to omega to power three. So again, this is a very significant discovery too, because this uh, the confinement media for GOM is very closely re actually re uh, 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 very closely resemble the biological membrane system. So uh, so highly relevant to the understanding of the functionalities of biological system. And uh, also this abnormal low energy dynamics will need to be considered in the uh, heat transport or management uh, for nanoscale uh, devices. So the last uh, example, uh, or the, 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 I would like to, 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 to mention is that uh, 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 study with quantum magnet. And uh, so the first example, um, uh, here is, uh, is actually this example. And uh, so this example is, uh, is, a, is a actually very recently being actually discovered. And it has a, a very rich spin, uh, spin structure, uh, uh, as shown here as a, a function of temperature and the magnetic field. It, it has a almost, uh, all, almost the perfect triangular actually lattice. Uh, but it's a, a, it's a two-dimensional actually system, and uh, so we it's, it's, it's proposed that this uh, sample actually contain called spin liquid uh, can be a, a, a can 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 hold a spin liquid state or super solid state or actually magnetic or pneumatic phase I and mean, etc. But uh, really, this is a uh, um, still ongoing. Uh, process, no one has uh, really proved uh, actually definitely. But uh, we um, uh, combined and, uh, 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 with uh, our new uh, semi Tesla superconduct magnet uh, and uh, the dilution insert on Pelican instrument. And uh, we, we did uh, extensive studies. So, this is the, actually the first example we use. Uh, dilution insert super magnet on pelican. As you can see here, we observe the long range of magn magnetic order at uh, 50 millikelvin. And uh, this long range magnetic order disappeared at uh, uh, 450 millikelvin. And we can also show the, uh, the uh, long range of magnetic order as a function of magnetic field. Uh, and uh, then we apply for a high magnetic field around the four Tesla, and we measured, uh, uh, we kind of uh, bring the sample into a fully polar state, and we measured the spin wave excitation in the AB plane. And about the, the excitation in the C direction showed actually no dispersion. So this is also a direct evidence of a two dimensional pro feature of this sample. And with this, this uh, 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 experiment uh, uh, results, we are able to extract the, 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 the um, exchange interaction and uh, we establish the Hamiltonian for this uh, um, system. <clears throat> so the uh, next example show this, uh, uh, this special samples and uh, it's the form of a square uh, Kagomi uh, uh, lattice. And uh, this, uh, um, Due to the strong frustration uh, uh, of the uh, uh, of the spin, uh, and uh, this is supposed to be uh, a spin liquid state. 
And uh, so we indeed actually see the continuum excitation at a, a low uh, at a temperature. Uh, and uh, uh, on Pelican, we, we are able to observe this continuum excitation at uh, down to 50 meter Kelvin, but uh, show uh, gap uh, within our energy resolution. Uh, so how much time do I have? Too quick or? Okay. Tang, you, 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 okay, you. Yeah, you, I think I still got uh, uh, several minutes. Okay, I think I actually I might uh, uh, try to finish here. And uh, so okay. I, now I will actually, actually, actually mention, uh, I'll tell you about uh, the sample environment on Pelican. We actually established a wide range of sample environment over uh, uh, actually many years. And uh, we have uh, the total loading 1.5 Kelvin cross that, which is our working host. This cross that uh, basically can provide uh, a uh, temperature range from 1.5 can to 800 k. It's a very versatile uh, piece of equipment. And uh, combined with the direction insert, we achieve 50 meter Kelvin actually routinely. And we also have a high temperature furnace can reach 1,600 degrees Celsius. And uh, so we also tried uh, already commissioned with lateral irradiation experiment. We basically, we can shoot a laser uh, beam to the sample, and uh, we we measure inlet neutron scattering dynamics of the sample uh, in situ. And uh, we also got the gas and the vapor delivery system, which can do the uh, you know uh, uh, different uh, uh, gas uh, environment. Uh, we also uh, proved we can apply for electrical field uh, up to. Uh, 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 many thousand kilovolts and uh, at the sample. Uh, the seven Tesla magnet is a really wonderful, wonderful piece of new equipment we have used uh, a lot recently. And uh, uh, it's, a, um, it's a new piece of equipment on Pelican. And uh, uh, it's a very, also very friendly, uh, um, uh, uh, very user friendly. It's very easy to operate. Uh, we have recently commissioned uh, uh, pressure cells uh, up to two gigapascal, depend on the sample, uh, and uh, we can uh, work. We can do a beta high pressure experiment. As we, I have talked, uh, um, we have already applied, and uh, the two publications uh, has been uh, 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 the uh, um, uh, as a result uh, uh, from this pressure cell. <clears throat> And the polarization analysis uh, uh, option and uh, still ongoing, but uh, we will get is uh, we will get works uh, very soon. <clears throat> uh, okay, I think with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, and uh, I would like to to mention that uh, Rich Moore, my uh, uh, colleague, and uh, we have been working on Pelican for many years, and uh, through the continuous support uh, with uh, many members from the different support teams at ACAS. We have been serving our user community for almost 10 years. And uh, the instrument, uh, without all this support, uh, and we will not ha uh, have the re re uh, smooth and the reliable operation of the Pelican instrument. Uh, I'm sure we will uh, continue our uh, uh, service, uh, service to our user community uh, um, to, uh, to, the, to the next level. Okay, uh, thanks. I would like to answer any questions if you have. Okay, thanks, Dr. Hong. So uh, any questions, you can pop up in the Q&A session and uh, also raise your hand so to unmute the, the Mac the questions oh okay pablo um hi can you hear me yeah okay uh thank you for the talk um uh, regarding the caloric effect materials you mentioned there are uh, four basic mechanisms is there any prospect that 
you can find a material that combines two or more of them or are the uh, the mechanism too, too different to be able to have a combined effect or even can be probably opposite effects so you neutralize or something like that okay thanks uh okay so if I understand your question, so you said that the borrow the borrow chloric material, right? Yeah, if you go back to the first example you gave, you have the like magnet, you can have magnetic effect, electric effect, or can have also ah uh, yeah, okay. That's effect, a so. that's a good question. I think yes, the answer is absolutely yes. And uh, so um uh this kind of study already actually uh, uh actually appear now people try to combine uh, different effects and uh, uh to enhance uh the 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 effects or to improve the performance of the materials yes it is possible yeah okay thank you yeah yeah any other questions uh Actually, I got one at home. So uh, it's uh, quite interesting to see that uh, hydrostatic pressure to induce a disorder state. So actually, so uh, do you have any idea what's the main physical picture for that materials at hydro, uh, high pressure state while yes. it's disorder? Yes, that's a, that's, a, um, that's a very good question. I think I didn't have the slide here, unfortunately. Um, so what 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 happened? Uh, so the the uh, the high pressure when the, we apply for high pressure. Uh, so let me find that. Uh, <laughs> when we 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 apply for the high pressure, actually the high pressure uh, <clears throat> suppress uh, the hydrogen bond. Uh, perpendicular to the SCN axis in this molecule. And uh, due to the, the, the hydrogen bond uh, uh, actually suppression, and uh, it's good to uh, the, 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 the other, the, uh, the, uh, the orthorhombic phase, and uh, uh, good to uh, actually relatively disordered uh, 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 actually state. This, this has the, 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 we actually analyze the diffraction uh, actually results. Uh, and uh, also through the the molecular dynamic simulation, and the, so that's basically the 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 the, the reason why this uh, um, uh, cause these effects. Uh, also, that's uh, the reason also cause the the negative thermal expansion. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So we also get a summit. So possible the last question. So we need to move on. Right. Uh, so first of all, thanks for the great talk. And uh, I learned about uh, a lot of capabilities of Pelican. So I might have questions later on for you as well. I'll be reach out by email. But sure, one sure. I, sure. Uh, one of the questions I want to ask right now is you mentioned about this technique where you observe the phase transition on water. Yeah. Uh, so the linear and the curved line. So uh, I know that recent studies have shown that uh, on water and on the liquid, the phase transition might not be like, it might not be an average phase transition, but rather just a local phase transition. Like the transition is occurring only on short length scales, not on the average uh, length scales. So do you have any comments on that? Uh, so your question is that you, 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 what, what do you, you think uh, that some liquid, they may have this uh, sharp, Transition, you mean? Uh, not sharp, but it's a short order transition, like local structure transition, not an average structure. Oh, uh, yes. The, yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, uh, that's also an interesting question uh, I didn't show here. Actually, I have a, a, another polymer liquid, and uh, we did see this actually continuum change uh, uh, when we cool down the sample. It's not like uh, actually water, we see the distinctive uh, phase transition. And they actually it's a gradual process. We can see there's some kind of uh, short range order form when we're cooling down. 
uh, the actually the samples. And uh, then the, this transition is not, uh, we can see from uh, a linear uh, a scale to gradually reach to east to power uh, to square law. And that's uh, actually intermediate states. Uh, could be actually between one and the two, the to the power. Sure. Yeah, I, I hope this answer your question. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, it really depend on the depend on the sample. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. So okay. So if the other people, uh, I got uh, one short question in chart. So Prism asks uh, whether we can measure the. Uh, increase in disorder of the catalyst under high pressure state. So I thought it should be possible, right? So <laughs> based yes, on my yeah, yes, we we can yeah we we uh, we we open to any kind of these uh, these uh, possibilities. We have the the equipment, and uh, we know we we have commission. We have tested. Uh, but uh, we, 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 we like to, to, to try different things. Uh, but uh, again, it's, uh, in the end, it's depend on the system. So the, what the pressure range we, we need uh, and uh, you know, we, what's the sample, uh, that, that kind of things. Uh, I would I like to discuss uh, in more details from the, okay. the experimental uh, point of view. Okay, 